All right, so why Cabo San Lucas when there's so many other places to live in the world? For, for myself, uh, I had the, the privilege of traveling the world and really testing out so many different countries, so many different cities. Actually, I lived in Thailand for five years. I lived in Bali for a bit. I was in and out of China, throughout China. I lived in Playa del Carmen for a year and a half. I traveled all of Mexico on a 50-day road trip. So I do have a good understanding on not just uh, all of Mexico, but really many other places in the world. And Cabo, again for myself, checks all my boxes. My number one box being the fact that the weather is good 365 days out of the year. That's not exactly true, but for me it is. When I compare it to Washington State, where I came from, where we have rain 80, 90% out of the year, and it's gray and depressing, and you know you you feel like a vampire. You can't leave your house. Um, Cabo is magical. Let's just say. <laughs> so for myself, um, yeah, that's number one. Number two, of course, is the the opportunities. There are a ton of opportunities here uh, for and for businesses, for entrepreneurs, re really for anybody. Of course, if you're working online, which so many people are now. It's a very easy transition here. On top of that, one of the big, big things was immigration. So before, when I was living in Thailand, you would get a one month visa when you entered the country. In, in Mexico, you get six months. So that is a huge, huge difference. And on top of that, most countries, it's very hard to become a resident in and to actually live there, to buy property. In Cabo, in Mexico, uh, they made it very, very easy to buy property, very easy to own a business, um, and it's it's just better to or easier to set roots. For example, in Thailand, again, you can only own 49% of a business, you can only own 49% of a house, and that's not something that I wanted to ever deal with. I've seen so many horror stories where you know, people would just kind of, you know, they would lose it all to their partner, to their ex, to their, um, you know, to uh, a, a lot of just, just different bad situations. And once you see this a thousand times, it's like, I definitely don't want to fall down that road. And so again, so on top of that, we've got safety, we've got the culture, the food, the women, the, you know, it's, it's extremely safe here. There's just so many things. Um, one other big thing too is, is Cabo's not a huge city, so you don't have crazy traffic like you would in New York City or LA or uh, Bangkok, but at the same time, I never get bored. It's a, a little city with a lot to do. We have so many different resorts, so many bars, nightclubs, uh, different events, whether it's charity events for, for things or um, you know community events, art walks, I mean, it just goes on and on and on. Like, I've literally never gotten bored. There's always an event, always something to do. Obviously, on top of that, Mexico in general is much less expensive than Canada, than the States, than Europe, than so many other countries. Baby, baby, come, come on, baby. Come on, baby. Baby, you're so good. You're so good, you're so good. <laughs> Okay, where was I at here? Where was I at here? Uh, okay, so on top of that, you can leverage your life, meaning on a budget that you would live a regular life in the States or in Canada, you can live in a resort here. You can live in a higher community. You can really like leverage your life to, um, you know that movie where like tiny people and you can like, I don't know if you remember that movie. It's like, okay, you can shrink yourself down and move into this world and and buy a mansion when before you could barely struggle to pay your rent. Something like that. I mean, you really can leverage your life here. So of course now, if you actually do like Cabo, and Cabo is obviously something on your mind, a place that you're thinking about moving to, then um, you need to understand the market because the market here is constantly changing. It's not what it was uh, 20 years ago. I mean, so many people are moving here after the pandemic, so, uh, you know, so many Canadians were kind of upset with their, uh, you know, the problems that they had, they couldn't leave their country. Um, obviously a lot of states in, uh, in America also had a lot of issues with lockdowns and things. And in Cabo, we were extremely free. We were 
kind of locked down for a couple of months, but to be honest, we really weren't locked down. It was more a surface thing. We had tons of speakeasies. Um, you know, the party continued, if you will. <laughs> um, but yeah, okay, let's say you do like Cabo, you like anywhere in Mexico. The first step you need to do is really start to, start to understand the market. So if Mexico is on your, you know, your list of possible places to retire, possible places to move, then you need to figure out what city is, is good for you. Myself, obviously I like Cabo San Lucas because um, in the community that I live, it's, it's a beautiful resort community and it's 10 minutes to downtown where the action is. So I can, I can chill out in the resort, but yet if I wanna go, have, you know, go, go to a club, go to a bar, go to an event, it's just a 10 minute drive away, and then I can come back, chill here at the pool, relax. I mean, it gives me everything that I want. Um, some people would say that San Lucas is a little bit more party. I would disagree because um, there's so many communities here that are not. I mean, if you live in Quivira, if you live in Rancho, if you live in Diamante, if you live in Pedregal, you I mean, you're in your own private community and it's very secure. There's nobody partying, there's nobody uh, doing, um, it's, it's extremely quiet, you know, very tranquilo, if you will. And, um, but yeah, that being said, San Jose is much more chill, a much older crowd. Other options, of course, would be Todos Santos, which is extremely chill. And then we've got La Paz as well, which is you know really like half the price of Cabo. You would be living more in what I would consider real Mexico. La Paz feels more like real Mexico. You don't have people trying to sell you tours, things like that. But you better learn your Spanish because there's not a lot of uh, you know English speakers there as well. Okay, you understand now. You want to move to Cabo. You want to move to San Jose, wherever it is. You need to figure out the market. Start to understand the prices because it's not what it was 10 years ago. I had my uncle call me the other day and said, uh, what well, can I get down there for uh, $30,000? And I was like, a car? I mean, I, I don't know. <laughs> not a lot, you, you can buy land. You could buy a very small piece of land, you know, typically starting actually around 40 or $50,000. And then you could build something, um, you could build something on there. I mean, that's kind of where it's starting for a nice little condo or something um, in Cabo, you know, 300 minimum. I mean, and that is the very bare minimum. 400, you know, you're getting something uh, decent. 500, now you're getting something, you know, you have some, some options and up, of course. I mean, Cabo goes all the way up to, you know, $12 million condo or something like this. I mean, the, there, is, it, there is options for everything but it isn't what it was 10 years ago where you can buy a, a sweet condo for, for 50,000 bucks. That's just not gonna happen. So the best way to understand this and to really get a, uh, a handle on the market is to talk to a real estate agent and have them set you up on, the, on a portal for the MLS. And so they can type in, okay, what are your criteria? Maybe it's, okay, we have to have a two bedroom. We wanna have a pool. We wanna be by a golf course. We wanna have an ocean view. We have to have uh, an outdoor grilling area and a jacuzzi and um, we can put all this into the MLS send you a bunch of different options of course ones that we think you might like and then you also can search for yourself as well once you've dialed it down you found some properties that you like then we can start to um, start to search those even further let's move back just a tiny bit something I forgot is understanding the financing of Mexico so it's very different here. Bella, you bit me, you bit me. Um, so financing here is very different than the States. There's not as much financing. It's really as a cash market. There are some options for pre-construction. So pre-construction is typically where they do offer financing. And actually I do have some other um, very good developments. And I'll, I'll put a link in the, the video here. But mostly, again, this is a cash market, and if you come down here thinking that, oh, okay, I got good credit in the States, I can just get a loan, it doesn't work like that here. Your credit, you have zero credit in Mexico. Maybe you have a 850 in the States, that means absolutely nothing here. So 
people either pay with cash, they take out a HELOC back home, um, you know, they, they, they pull funds from back home and, and that's how you buy property here. So don't waste anybody's time if, you're not, if you don't have cash and you're not actually ready to, to buy property. Okay, there are a few other deals where some people will, um, you know, do uh, financing. And actually, I do have a, a couple deals like that in my back pocket if that interests you. But again, you're going to need a pretty large down payment, much bigger than you would back in the States. Now, let's say that you've picked out some properties. You want to go research them. Now, your realtor, he should actually have already done some research, research on these properties and made sure that these are good properties that you actually really want to even look at because there are some properties out there that, for example, might look great on, on, on a picture, but you go there and you see that, okay, it looks great, you have a view, but this land right in front of you, they can build a house right in front of it. So this is not a good property, not a good investment. That's a, a big thing there. Maybe you want to Airbnb this property, but they don't actually allow Airbnb in that community. And now you're trying to buy an investment property, but you just uh, bought a property that only allows long-term leasing. So you have to do that pre-research pre or your realtor really should be doing that for you. And then from there, now the fun happens. That's when we start to go actually go out, look at the properties. I will drive over there. I would pick you up if it's me, obviously, which it should be. <laughs> so I would drive over, pick you up. I can pick you up from the airport if you want. Um, then we set up a time and we have five properties that we're gonna go look at. Bella, will you please stop biting me, baby? Okay, so we're gonna go look at these properties. Now let's say that we find one that we like and we wanna put an offer in on this. Now, typically I would have done comps before, but of course, if, if not, if we didn't have time, if this was a quick thing, I would do comps afterwards. Make sure that the price that they're asking is, uh, is, is a proper price, is, a, is the correct price. And if it's not, then of course we're going to submit an offer, but we would submit an offer at a lower rate or at a lower uh, cost. So we have to do the, uh, do the research. We're not just gonna take their, uh, their pricing and think, oh, that's, that, that's the right, correct pricing. No, we're gonna run cops, comps. We're gonna see what all the previous properties sold at, and then we're also gonna see what's current now. And what are the properties selling for now? Because of course the market is always changing. And some people will just throw a big price tag on there and see if somebody wants to buy it. And that, uh, that also happens. Doesn't mean that that's necessarily what the property is worth. Now let's say we've got the property, we've submitted the offer, and they have accepted. So typically what's gonna happen next is you're gonna get five to 10 days to put down 10%, 10%, 10% earnest money. And this, uh, this is going to go, this is going to lock you into that contract. As soon as that money hits escrow, you're basically going to be locked in and that money is always going to be non-refundable. So you need to make sure that you have your other financing uh, available. So, <laughs> Bella. So, and typically a closing in Cabo is gonna take about, Bella, it's gonna take about two to four months. So, and we can also set that up uh, depending on your needs. Let's say, for example, it's going to take you three months to secure the rest of your financing. You want to make sure you have enough time to take out that HELOC or maybe you have another property closing or whatever it might be, uh, depending on the property. We can adjust that closing to fit your needs as long as the seller, of course, is willing to uh, agree to those terms. Now, the other option, of course, would be a soft closing. Maybe you want to get into the property very quickly. That also is an option. We can ask the seller if they would be interested in doing a soft closing, and that would be where we would actually release about 80% of the funds in, and you would get the keys then at that point. Then at the actual closing, we would release the rest of the money, the other 20%, and that's when uh, the title would actually be transferred into your name. So I always get the question, can foreigners buy property in Mexico? And I did another video on this. I'll put, put a link here, but the simple answer is yes. Mexico made it extremely easy for you to buy property here. You own it 100%. The bank can never touch it. You can pass it down to your kids, to your grandkids, to your grandkids, grandkids. It's not 
a uh, hundred years, then it expires. That's complete BS. It automatically renews every 50 years. Um, and you do have to pay a little bit of money on this, but it's, it's not much at all. And again, you can go ahead and check out that other video. But yeah, simply put, yes, you can. And it's one of the easiest countries in the world to buy property. You do not need to be a resident. You do not need anything. Actually, 97% of the people that buy property here are not residents and don't have any sort of residency here in Mexico or in Cabo. So that's it guys, just to, to summarize again, you know, contact a realtor, get, it, get set up on the MLS, look at the properties, find properties that you wanna buy, uh, set up a date to go view these properties, submit an offer, um, you know, depending on the, the price of the property, submit the offer. If the, if the offer goes through, you're gonna need to put your 10% down to hold the, the property then typically in two to four months before closing, you're gonna be asked to send the other 90% of the funds for closing. As soon as that money hits, you're gonna come down, sign the papers, that's it. Uh, you're gonna own the property. Of course, there's other ways as far as like pre-construction is concerned. Pre-construction is actually kind of easier because you can lock in property for as little as 10% down, and then you can pay, uh, for example, with, um, some other developments I, I know here, you could pay the additional up to 60%, so it'd be 50 more percent over the course as it's built, and then the last 40% you could finance for up to 10 years at 6%. Again, I'll put another little link here to that video there. That's an awesome development there as well. But, um, but yeah, hope that explains some stuff about buying property here in Cabo. And, um, God, you're a bad dog. You are such a bad dog. You are the worst doggy. You are the worst doggy. You are sure the worst doggy on Cabo. Um, guys, yeah, if you want to view some properties, you know, when you're here, email me, Brandon at CaboCribs.com, Instagram, BK Cabo, YouTube, BK Cabo, and uh, I can set you guys up on a portal. I can send you a bunch of different properties that, that, are, that fit your guys' needs. And then if you want, we can come out and we can view those properties and, um, yeah, we can, we can go from there. So again, if you guys have any other questions, you can send them to me on pretty much uh, anything. Uh, I'm on social media a lot. I'm always checking my phone, probably too much actually. So yeah, feel free to send me a message. And uh, yeah, please like, subscribe to, I always forget about that. Um, if you guys wanna see more videos like that, like this, please like, subscribe. And uh, that helps the algorithm, makes me go you know, higher up so more people can see this. And um, yeah, I will see you guys on the next, on the next video.